you know there is one perspective we talked about is the the problem of evil from the theodicy perspective that um, how could god allow it but another perspective is we talked about human nature so how could human beings do something like this so the two are related but still uh, the two are somewhat distinct questions so in our tradition we have the idea of uh, divine and demoniac natures and if we consider the 16th chapter in the demoniac nature krishna does talk about how pe- some people delight in causing harm and causing death they celebrate it they just see how powerful i am how unrivaled my power is so uh, now that doesn't really talk about mass destruction but i think in one of the purports 169 prabhupad says that this verse indirectly talks about weapons of mass destruction so when we talk about this divine and demoniac nature uh, do we see these as uh, two two polarities within human nature itself so because at one level we could say there is a divine and demoniac side within everyone and in some cases the demonic side is very highly developed so would you like to address this issue briefly from this perspective the divine and demonic natures so now we're going to hour 2 <laughs> <laughs> uh, look there, there there is no polarity in the nature of the soul hmm there, there is no divine and demonic na- nature in, in, in the eternal atma the jivatma is pure spirit and it, it is satchitananda um so we are talking about the soul in its embodied state in its conditioned state mm. you know the, the nitya badha souls mm. so yes the the longer we're in the material world the more we're exposed to to matter the more our original nature gets covered more and more and more and more to the point where it may seem to be extinguished people may be behaving in such a way that you can say they have no spiritual nature <laughs> these people are just pure evil um uh, we we are compelled by our faith to know that however evil someone may be that there there's an original nature there the great souls the great great souls mm-hmm. i don't mean ordinary great souls <laughs> you know you and i know a lot of god brothers and god sisters who are great souls but i'm talking now about great souls capital g capital s yes the truly great souls they can enter into a situation of pure evil and turn that situation around without saying a word just by their presence it's possible look at uh, jagai and madai for example pure evil pure evil can you imagine uh, throwing a sharp object at nityananda prabhu i mean <laughs> and and the 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 harm they did there, there was there was nothing redemptive in their characters hmm chaitanya mahaprabhu by his pure by his presence not only did he get them to apologize and reform they became exalted vaishnavas <laughs> they they built bathing ghats you know they they gave their lives over to devotional service <laughs> the, the 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 conversion there that that not conversion the reversion to their original spiritual nature was so complete it was possible because of chaitanya's presence just as mere presence mm-hmm. prabhupad could do that as well so if we become qualified sufficiently qualified mm. it's possible now without mentioning names there were some disciples of bhakti siddhanta saraswati goswami maharaj who actually met hitler they went to germany in the 1930s and they had audience with hitler they didn't change him this much not this much that's true shri la prabhupad came and he he changed the entire western world you know this 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 lecha dam here <laughs> this this world of hitlers this world of 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 fallen souls 
by his presence, by his purity. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where we're going. That, that's where we're supposed to go, is to that place where we're so self-aware and we're so Krishna conscious that uh, we can go even into that most darkest of evil and become agents of change. But don't fake that. Don't pretend that. Don't attempt to do that. <laughs> if you're not a great soul, because you will do more harm than good, you will probably kill yourself in the process, and you will just make things worse. Thank so we have to be honest. You want to uh, bring peace to an area of war? You want to bring harmony to a place of strife and conflict? You better be pretty well situated in your Krishna consciousness. Yes, so I think that is an important point that, you know, that means wherever we are, according to our adhikar, according to our level, we can share Krishna consciousness. And then at least there we bring about some virtue, some spirituality. And uh, those who are far greater than us, they can maybe work at places where there is, there is far greater evil. But we could say evil is in degrees. And if we combat the evil in our hearts, then we are also playing a small part at least in decreasing the overall evil in the world. Now, what you've just done there, Chaitanya Chan Prabhu, is to put your finger on the position that I'm trying to communicate to people with regard to this code of ethical behavior. We have to set a norm, a standard, no matter what the external, social, or cultural, or historic, or political conditions may be. My conviction is that Srila Prabhupada would have preferred to have a smaller movement that is of the very highest standard than a big, powerful, wealthy international institution that's constantly making compromises and bowing to the money people and, 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 and uh, uh, um, abrogating uh, the standards because in this place, uh, that's not the, the culture. That, that's my position. That he wanted one moon, not a sky full of stars. I, you know, I, so, I have my own experiences with him where I, I tried to compromise. He didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. He said, we will stand on our purity. So if I understand... It's a big challenge. Huge, huge challenge. Yeah. Now, if I understand right... When you are talking about one moon bed, we have written a thousand stars. What you are referring to is, uh, is, I would say, very different from the way I have heard this verse being used. And that means I, I have often heard this verse being used that we should be completely uncompromising in presenting our philosophy, however hard it hits people, and we shouldn't worry about people's feelings. And even if, if through our hard preaching only one person comes, that's, that's, that's the glory. So I think what you are talking about is more of, uh, say, those who would prefer to cut, cut some ethical corners in the name of practicality to get big things. Let's, let, let's be honest here. Let's be honest. I don't think there are five people who came to Krishna consciousness because they were so impressed that Prabhupada was a lion and he came down like, a, like an avalanche of stones uh, on, on people and, and uh, was, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, strict and, and an authoritarian. People don't even know the philosophy he was teaching. They came because they were attracted to him. They, they came because they were appreciative of his Vaishnava character. We talked about this when we had our discussion about science also. Yeah. You can have all the mathematical formulas in the world. You're not going to do one bit of good to improve people's lives. Go deep into your heart. Develop some appreciation and compassion that everyone out there is like you, an eternal soul caught up in this material world. That compassion, that will attract people. 